Hello there. Happy New Year. It is 2018. Today is January 1st. 2018 is a powerful, real year. And we are getting down to business this forthcoming 365 days. Now, typically, I like to get these videos out a little in advance before the newer full moon. However, I've been so busy, this is the first real opportunity I've had to sit down for several hours. And so, this year, we are kicking things off with a full moon in Cancer. That is falling at 11 degrees of the sign of the crab, approximately 9.23 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, this year of 2018, again, we're getting down to business. We're talking about power, we're talking about authority, we're talking about initiation into our own accountability and capability to take control and construct the reality that surrounds us, which involves our involvement in the world. And so, every single year, this full moon in Cancer happens around the holiday season, New Year season, and every single year this full moon in Cancer brings up the Cancer-Capricorn polarity, which is the security access in the zodiac. And this is a period of time where our insecurities can be driving what constructing endeavors, what initiations and initiations into our own authority and accountability for our world. There is a lot of pressure that can be put on with this full moon. And this is always a powerful full moon because the zodiac sign of Cancer is ruled by the moon herself. She is especially strong in her own sign. This full moon is a feeler. So hopefully not too many of you, uh, you know, overdrank or, or overexhausted yourself in these New Year's holiday season expenditures because, yes, this can be a period where we can feel uh, the drawback, the insecurities, the pressure can be on. Now, uh, I like to think of supermoon as sort of being a buzzword in astrology, not necessarily signifying a full, a powerful full moon, but this is uh, the closest full moon of the year of 2018, it falling in her own sign of Cancer. So yes, a powerful full moon, a feeling full moon. Cancer and the moon rules our emotional body, our emotional core, our own feeling processing that goes on inside of ourself. And with Cancer, there is a sole intention to become inwardly emotionally secure which requires finding relationships, connections, work and services out in the world that actually allows us to feel emotionally secure inwardly and emotionally fulfilled. And this again is a full moon that can bring up insecurities because it's not typically easy in our given day, age and culture to find that emotional fulfillment when we're also talking about the opposite polarity, the sign opposite of Cancer is Capricorn, which has everything to do with physical security, our roles and obligations and duties towards society, our obligations towards traditions, the bills that need to get paid, the time limits that we are dealing with, the responsibilities put on our own shoulders, and Capricorn is the sign of accountability. Saturn just moved into his own sign of Capricorn on December 21st, the winter solstice. And that alignment of the Sun and Saturn on the winter solstice only happens once approximately every 365 years. Another signature that this next year we are getting down to business. We are having to be accountable for our physical, three-dimensional, real-world reality. And yet, the pressures put on from society, the pressures put on from our family expectations, obligations, can create insecurities 
This is a time period where there can usually be seesawing between our emotional fulfillment and physical security. Whenever we're dealing with polarities or oppositions in astrology, there is typically a seesawing, and that seesawing is somewhat natural and an evolutionary mechanism in itself to achieve a level of balance and bridge what gives us emotional security and inner fulfillment with what we are actually doing in the outer world in order to provide physical security, feel safe, feel grounded, and feel connected with others in a practical type of way. And so, typical situations, you know, it's like expectation to be with the family, it's Christmas time, holiday time, it's like time to spend with our dysfunctional family and deal with all these emotions, so on and so forth. And then there's this pressure, this expectation, oh, this is what we should do which can usually lead to a sacrificing of our own emotional fulfillment, so on and so forth, because of the pressures. Or there's so much money that needs to be spent on little Johnny, his stocking, so on and so forth. And it's like, if we want to feel nurtured, if we want to feel secure, sometimes we have to fight against the grain of the societal pressures or what the government is saying is okay the amount of money in our bank account how much money we're saving for taxes it's just like can we get inward emotional security and external physical security without self-sacrificing either is the challenge and the opportunity going on with this full moon and yes, again, it's a time period where essentially we need to be very forgiving. Sometimes we have to change the rules, the regulations, the societal expectations in order to get that emotional fulfillment. And that requires a level of forgiveness, letting go of the guilt associated with the expectations coming from our past, authority, society, etc. And yet if we also, you know, if we go too much into the full moon in Cancer, and we're just getting lost in our emotions and trying, trying, trying to fill ourselves up on the inside without there being a balance of taking care of our bodies or managing time or money or what we're dealing with, well then we can downward spiral. And the coping mechanisms for the cancer insecurities of feeling emotionally frigid or afraid or not feeling safe or protected can lead to coping mechanisms of overeating or watching so much television that we're trying to escape our body, escape our feelings, or getting stuck and not doing so much. And so again, there's this challenge of like so much to do, such little time, so many expectations and not getting a, a break or feeling so much emotional stuff that we feel stuck and we're unmoving and then we feel depressed again. This is about a mastery of balance. Don't sacrifice your healthy, good food that makes you feel comforted and good just because there's not enough money temporarily in the bank and then we starve and we feel depleted and then we get icy and, you know, anxious because our belly's empty. Again, there's a balance here. And we don't just want to run away and into, you know, doing whatever feels good in such a way that makes us anxious and insecure because all of these real world expectations and obligations are not being taken care of, so on and so forth. So that's our full moon in Cancer going on tonight. The opportunity is to really integrate uh, you know, a way of feeling very, 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 very secure and empowered in our life. And that's the major opportunity as well as the other things going on in the heavens with the planets, so on and so forth. What's going on in the heavens and the planets these next two weeks, the first two weeks of January 2018, is a major introduction of the two zodiac archetypes that are taking us through this next year. Namely, Jupiter being in Scorpio, now through November of this year, and Saturn being in Capricorn, now through the end of 2020. Scorpio and Capricorn are two signs that both have very much to do with power. Power. Being in control of our reality. And in the way of that can be all of the things that make us feel disempowered. The things that we don't have control over. 
the things that make us feel insecure because the government's doing this or our boss is doing this. You know, again, where are we lacking control and power can be where insecurities are really being exposed and brought to the surface in order to call our attention to those places and figure out a way to fundamentally restructure our lives in such a way that we are initiating ourselves into our own authority. So to take control of our reality, we are inevitably accountable for our own reality. And it's very, very easy to get lost in blaming the culture, the world, the degradation of humanity, our, our cultural structures, how they are unfair and unjust and prevent us from moving forward. Yes, these problems are there and we can be meeting those walls, potentially. But the North Node is in Leo, still. For the next, you know, let's see, it's going to be, you know, about 10, 12 months. And it's this period of having to find creative solutions in order to overcome these obstacles. And that is an initiation into our divinity, being a unique and special human being. Everybody has unique and special gifts that we've been given. And that is what we need to be accountable for, because there's where we can find the resolutions that allow us to bridge emotional and physical fulfillment and security together, but also overcome some of these cultural blockages that really choke up our capability to freely express who we are. You know, it's like, oh shit, I can't do who I am. I can't really do what I want to in this life because money, culture, society, family prevents me from doing these things. And it's no longer acceptable for us to allow that manipulation to deceive us into self-sacrificing, into giving up, into hopelessness and the downward spiral. That's a potential right now. And these can be very, very heavy days, as we'll talk about. But there is also the opportunity to really come out of that downward spiral by getting sick of the old patterns. What we're sick of self-sacrificing, what we're sick of being oppressed by is like a loaded spring dynamic that can release this tremendous amount of passion and ambition. And so what's the big transit going on this next week? Is Mars is coming up to a conjoinment with Jupiter in Scorpio this Saturday, January 6th. Mars and Jupiter together is ambition, is power. This is my goals. This is where I'm going. I'm going to do it. I can be the one who gets it all done. I'm number one. Nobody's stopping me. This is a powerful aspect, particularly happening in the sign of Scorpio. You know, this is like, this is me. This is what I really want. These are my desires. And there's an opportunity with Mars conjoining Jupiter to illuminate our desires. And these desires in Scorpio go deep. These are unconscious desires. These are passionate desires. These are the types of things that sometimes we like to keep secret because it's not just the light and fluffy and good and sugar and spice and everything nice. It can be the full spectrum, the good, the bad, the ugly, the desires that we may want to keep under wraps. And of course, Mars, Jupiter, and Scorpio is sex, 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 yes. We can be really feeling the sexual passion. And it's important also that we are investigating our own sexual nature, investigating our sexual passion, and investigating our own deeper unconscious desires. Because this Mars-Jupiter conjunction is happening square to the moon's nodes. We should not avoid or try to suppress, deny, or keep under wraps our own desires, our own directions. And Pluto, you know, Scorpio, ruled by Pluto, these desires, these are not necessarily the desires that we consciously choose. Like, oh, I'm going to be a good person and go to church, and so I desire to go to church. It's like, no, these are desires coming from our soul. Many, many, many layers deep. Many, many, many lifetimes deep. And so it's no wonder that these desires can play out sexually. I find that sexual desires, which can be, of course, full spectrum, you know, the whole desire spectrum and sexuality can go from the most beautiful, sacred connections, merging with other souls in the most deep, deep profound, and intimate way, to the most perverted and strange and messed up and, 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 and borderline evil desires. And most of us, these desires are somewhat in between. 
We should not be ashamed of these desires because nobody is perfect, but these desires oftentimes reflect our own soul's deeper evolutionary journey. Our soul's desires, even if uh, these sexual desires, even if they seem perverse or weird or scary, not aligned with our uh, moral integrity, not aligned with our societally accepted, you know, you know, area. They, these desires can be outside of there, but they can also inform us of our deeper soul's journey. Um, for example, sexual fetishes, even if they're not consciously understood, they may be powerful unconscious desires. And these can be coming from past lives, from death trauma in past lives, from early childhood trauma, and our own desire to resolve these issues. The point is we've got to get into them, we've got to observe them, we've got to illuminate them. And we have to be very, very, very honest about what our actual desires are, even if it's good, bad, or ugly. And that's important, critically, critical work, because if we do not be honest about these deeper desires, if we try to sweep them under the rug, oh, I'm real horny about this thing, but oh, it's inappropriate, so we shove it under. If we shove it under, it's going to blow up in our face in a much, much more messy, inappropriate way. Be honest, be clear, be open about the full spectrum of who you are. Mercury is square to Chiron this approaching weekend, Saturday, January 6th. There can be a difficulty expressing these parts of ourself. There can be a sensation that it's difficult to communicate. There can be a sense of inadequacy. There can be insecurities voicing this full spectrum of who we are. And then a withholding or an introverting. I don't feel safe to talk about this stuff. But make sure you are putting it into words. You are communicating these things. That in itself is a healing practice. It will take us very, very far, at particularly at this particular time. So don't sweep it under. That will create problems for us down the line. Rather, communicate, even if it has to be writing a note, sending an email, whatever metaphorical way you want to do it, put it out there. Express these things. Communicate these things. Do not sweep under or keep a loaded spring in a, in a depressed, denied, loaded spring dynamic. The key with this Mars, Jupiter, square the moon's nodes is honesty. Even if there's parts of ourselves that we don't totally understand. I don't know, I'm feeling all these weird things. I'm called in these weird directions. I have these, uh, uh, these feelings that desire to be expressed this way, but there's no conceptual understanding of why. It's okay. Just talking about exploring and illuminating these dynamics can be extremely informative to our deeper nature and where things can be leading us in the forward, in, in the future, in aligning with our soul's integrity and embracing this passion and this ambition. You know, when we breathe in and align with our desire nature in a way that's authentic, transparent, open, and honest, and not being in denial, uh, you know, lying or keeping things behind our back, then we can become powerfully integrated souls, take control of our life without any self-sacrifice or denial. In, which, in such a way that makes us more empowered and more capable without necessarily having to suppress, deny, or be in denial of who we truly are. And so this Mars, Jupiter has everything to do with desires. It's passion. Let's take control. Let's do this. The positive here is, again, ambition. We can catalyze change in our own lives, in our relationships, in our work structure, in our family structure, to be more authentically who we are in our soul's power, in our unique individuality, and more liberated to be our, our authentic, spontaneous, natural self-expression. There's a lot of transformation fundamentally going on these next couple weeks, deeply beneath the surface. It's almost like hitting a giant reset button that is allowing us to lay a new foundation, a new course, a new direction in the endeavor of self-empowerment, becoming truly integrated souls, accountable for our lives, accountable for our reality, and taking it upon ourselves to build and construct the world that we truly want to live in. Powerful weeks. Coming up next week, Tuesday, January 9th, there is a Venus-Sun-Pluto conjunction at around 18 degrees Capricorn. So we've got Venus coming up to the Sun, the Sun coming up to Pluto at the same time. Whenever planets pass Pluto, it's like hitting a reset button. 
because there's an opportunity to completely transform and restructure the dynamics of that particular planetary energy. Venus is what we value on the inside. This is what I love. This is what I cherish. This is what makes me feel good on the inside. That is simultaneously our electromagnetic field that attracts people that value similar things. Typically, we like similar things that our friends like and we share these things. That's Venus. Venus in Capricorn is let's find associations that make us feel safe and secure in the real world. Let's lay a concrete slab that is an unwavering foundation that we can all put our feet down on and feel concretely grounded. This is our relationship. These are our goals. This is what makes us feel safe. These are the new rules. This is the new system that's going to allow us to achieve more, do more, accomplish more, bring in more, and feel concretely more in our power and authority as creators in this world. That's Venus coming up to Pluto. Joined with the Sun, our own creative self-expression, our own individuality, self-image, and sense of purpose. We are having the opportunity to reinvent ourselves as then Venus and the Sun are going to come up and square Uranus the following Saturday, January 13th and January 14th. Again, it's like reinventing our identity, our sense of purpose, and our relationships in order to feel more concretely established. Now, particularly before the Pluto conjunction, before January 9th, this next week, there can oftentimes be insecurities. Again, this full moon, insecurities. I don't feel safe. I don't feel concrete in this relationship. What if this happens? What if we lose control? What if my lover dies, you know? Capricorn is like practical responsibility, Boy Scout motto, always be prepared, yeah? It's like, we haven't written our wills yet. You know, what if something tumultuous happens and something happens and we lose all of our money? It's preventative measures. It's being safe in the world. It's being practical. It's dealing with money, time, finances. I mean, let's be real. Uranus moves into Taurus this year and remains there for the next nine years. We're gonna go through a whole reboot of money systems, how we handle wealth, how we administer energy systems such as electricity, how we handle agriculture. The whole global economy is getting really wobbly and there's not really a whole lot of security if you put all your eggs in one basket. So a key for this Uranus and Taurus period that's taking us in the next decade is diversification of wealth. Be prepared. You know, you want to have money invested in, uh, you know, your, your, your metals and, and your real world stuff in the stock market. You know, people are getting into this whole, uh, you know, Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency. It's like, yes, diversify your wealth. Have a backup plan. Always be prepared. If there is an economic wobbly situation, we want to have backup plans. We want to have physical security. We want to have, you know, wood logs to fuel the fire if the, if the electricity goes out for several days, right? That is called real world practical wisdom, yeah. Capricorn is like the war veteran that's seen and survived it all and has gotten over it. It's like, yeah, welcome to the real world. And there is a practical guidance that comes out of that real world maturity. And so somewhat expecting for the worst gives us the opportunity to prepare for all situations. The key in preparing for the worst is not being freaking out or anxious that the worst is actually going to happen, that it's the end of the world, uh, that, the, that everything's going to burn down or the, the, everything's going to blow up. No, be prepared but don't anticipate everything dying, you know, that's just, hey, winter time's coming around, Saturn, yeah, got my hat on, want to be prepared, you want to have enough food to survive the winter. Very, very ancient practice, you make sure that you have the agricultural preparations to survive the winter. That's the practicality of Capricorn, and this next couple weeks we have a huge opportunity to fundamentally restructure ourselves, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, to be aligned, integrated, in our bodies, empowered, and prepared. 
so to take control of our lives. And again, you know, there, there's a huge amount of ambition and power. My guess is you're all feeling this. It's like the energy now is like, woo, let's go for it. Let's actually do this shit. Let's not just talk about this anymore. Like all of these, you know, decades of what the new age is going to be and, and all this mystical yammering and blah, 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 blah. It's time to be real. Capricorn is managing time. It's dealing with resources. It's in this world that the magic is happening these next several years. We're not waiting around or just speculating about it. We are doing what needs to get done in order to be prepared. The advantage, the gift of this next period is that there's a huge amount of energetic passion and ambition that we can harness and breathe in and don't be afraid to be big. Don't be afraid to take control. Don't be afraid to initiate yourself into being your own authority so you can reconstruct and change the rules of the game in order for this world to actually work better for you than it ever has before. And then as we master these things, it automatically becomes a part of our extending inspiring and uplifting other souls because we're getting prepared so on and so forth this is a group endeavor and so this action between mars and jupiter happening in scorpio venus the sun saturn pluto all in capricorn there is a natural sextile between the sign of scorpio and the sign of capricorn Again, this is ambition, this is power, this is making it real, this is catalyzing change and transformation in our own personal lives, in our relationships, and our work associates being involved in society by and large. So again, huge amount of advantage and opportunity and productivity going on these weeks. What should also be mentioned is that just because the sextile is a quote-unquote harmonious aspect that does not necessarily mean nice or easy. This is a huge misconception in astrology as though harsh aspects such as, you know, square opposition means bad, negative, difficult. Easy aspects such as trine or sextile is easy, effortless, gifts being served to us. Not necessarily. The sextile between Scorpio and Capricorn, this is power. This is where some of the darkest, heaviest, most challenging and difficult aspects of life can also come up. So guess what? All of us human beings on this planet are receiving this huge wave of ambition and this huge push into our power. And that doesn't float nicely for everybody, you know? Scorpio and Capricorn, this can also be like gangsters, you know, stealing automatic weapons from other countries in order to run drug rings and control blocks of cities, you know, controlling families, controlling infrastructure through dominance, through being in charge, through manipulation. This can be murder. This can be tragedy. Not saying this is necessarily happening to you. But this is going on in the world. Hello, we have to be aware of the world if we're going to be in our own authority in the world. This world is not all sugar plums and gumdrops. There is manipulation. There is warmongers. There are gangsters. The government is horribly oppressive and likely, you know, giving money and, and fueling all of these other, you know, really dark and shady endeavors. So part of be prepared is also be careful. Protect yourself, you know. Make sure that you lock your door, you know. Make sure that there's nothing, you know, that you really need that you're leaving in the car overnight, so on and so forth. This is not to uh, distribute a vibe of, of ah, anxiety and be freaked out. Again, this is, this is part of the push. Yes, we have to be real in the real world. And there are, you know, people that want to help us and people that want to manipulate us in the world. This Capricorn period is making us aware of all of these dynamics. And so, uh, you know, Saturn going through Capricorn these next two and a half years is not just building up and constructing more, 
you know, a big drive right now is we got to make more money. That's a way to be more prepared and that's good. We need to make more money. This whole spiritual prejudice against making money is a horrible disease that prevents some of the most intelligent, helpful, compassionate souls from being even more helpful and compassionate in the world because they're unconsciously throwing themselves under the bus, self-sacrificing, etc. So no, be powerful, be a powerful individual, have a big strong ego. It allows you to do more, to achieve more, to help more people. And yes, we do have to be practical and make money to do this. Saturn going through Capricorn in the next two and a half years is not just the building and adding more on, it's also deconstructing, deconditioning. What are the rules, the regulations, the conditions that we were conditioned by in early childhood? Particularly the first seven years of our life, we received the majority of our conditioning. You're a man, you're supposed to behave this way. You're a woman, you're supposed to behave this way. It's a dog-eat-dog, fight-to-survive world. Make sure you self-sacrifice your creativity. It's never going to pay the bills. Make sure that you are exhausting yourself to keep up with the standards of the school and in the authorities from your teachers, so on and so forth, is a part of this conditioning that may not any longer be serving us because it actually kills our creativity. It kills our self-empowerment. It kills our capability to be emotionally fulfilled as well as successful in the world. So do not self-sacrifice in order to be successful in the world while depleting your emotional body, killing your own dreams, your own creativity. What your inner child wants can lead you into your soul's truth. By embodying what makes you a special divine child of God. This is asteroid Ceres on the north node in Leo. What makes you special will allow you to contribute more that is recognized by society as being special. It will give you more physical security. It will be more recognized and supported in the world by doing something that's different, that's going against the grain of the conditions that we received from our culture, society, early world upbringing, etc. And so this is about changing the rules as much as it is about surviving in the world practically. And the, you know, the phrase that I think of in, in terms of Saturn and this dealing with the world comes from Yeshua, better known as Jesus Christ. In the Bible, the line goes, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. And he's talking to some very, very poor people having to pay their taxes. And they don't want to pay their taxes because screw Caesar, this rich emperor in his castle, demanding money from all of us poor peasants. And Jesus says, give to Caesars what is Caesars. You know, it's, it's his face on the coin. Whatever. You know, you want to give what you need to to the government in order to survive, in order to keep yourself out of prison. That's called practicality. We can't declare war on the parts of reality that will end up dominating us. We have to figure out how to work in these hierarchies. And yet, we don't have to let Caesar dominate us. Part of the phrase, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, is yeah, just give it. Don't worry too much about it. You have your own reality that you're in control of. You have your own measures of abundance, success, physical security. You know, find other ways of creating the rules and the reality in your own bubble of reality so you can self-empower yourself. Don't let Caesar dictate over you, you or strip you naked or make you feel hopeless or drained or like a failure or inadequate. No, those are his rules. That's his game. And we just have to pay Caesar in order to not get thrown into jail, in order to be practical, in order to survive. But apart from that, you initiate yourself into your own authority. You make the rules now. Figure out what can actually work in the world and simultaneously works for you without sacrificing either or. And I would say you're well on the way of these years being tremendously productive and successful for you in really coming into your ambition and your power as a soul so you can feel successfully integrated and secure in showing up as yourself. And yes, one person can make a difference. And yes, we can catalyze productive change in our world. In that endeavor, I am absolutely wishing you all the best. And I look forward to talking to you next time. Much love and wishing the best to you and yours. Take care.